What are we discussing on today's Locked On Dimebacks podcast? Is the six-man rotation a good idea for the D-backs and players who need to step up in the stretch run of the season? You are Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Lockdown Dimebacks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. I'm Miller Thomas, host of this wonderful podcast, a multimedia journalist, and I'm a graphic designer. So please go check out my website, MillerThomas24.myportfolio.com. I'm there to see all my latest work from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. If you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter at CreatorThomas24 for the personal account at Locked On Diamondbacks on Twitter or Miller.Thomas123 on Instagram, or look up Locked On Diamondbacks on Instagram as well. Those are my personal and show accounts if you want to follow me some more. On today's Locked On Diamondbacks podcast, we'll talk about the D-backs taking down the Rockies and how Florida is up next. Is it a good idea for the D-backs to go to a six-man rotation and players who need to step up during the stretch run of the season. Thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free. It's available on all platforms. So please continue to tell your friends. Now let's get into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. I almost forgot to mention it. Don't forget to hit subscribe to Locked on Diamondbacks on YouTube. But now let's talk a little bit about that Rocky series and who the D-backs have coming up next because the D-backs really ended that Colorado series in style. The best offense in baseball since June 1st. The hottest team in baseball since that date. We used June 29th as like our main, you know, date, our, our main like pivotal nexus point in the season it feels like everything changed after june 29th but since june 1st the d-backs also have the best record in baseball with all the stats so this has been uh the hottest team in the sport not just for like a week or two week stretch this has been the hottest team in the sport for over two months now and that is something that is very very exciting to see I think the fun thing about using the June 29th date, because that's like the one a lot of people use. I think the fun reason to do that is because June 29th, that was game 83. So literally like you split the season down the middle, the 162 game schedule. The D-backs basically start to get going in the literal second half of the season. Not when we say second half, like the all-star break, the literal second half, you were to chop the entire schedule in half. The D-backs have been good in the second half of the schedule, and they did it again against the Colorado Rockies. They dominated them in that finale, 11-4. to They ran out the starting pitcher in the first inning for the Rockies. D-backs have not done that all season. They wasted no time. Uh, 44 pitches for the Rockies starter in the first inning. He was laboring in that start, and the D-backs were taking advantage. You, of course, got... The Eugenio Suarez Grand Slam, five ribbies, three hits. And think about how far we've come with Eugenio Suarez. We hated him the first couple months of the season. I was one of those people. I was like, we need to cut him, DFA him, trade him. Like, I was willing to do anything to get Eugenio Suarez off this team to begin the year. That's how bad he was. He was such a non factor for this team. But in the second half of the season, Post All Star break, second half, I'll say, in 25 games, he's batting 298 with a 985 OPS. In the month of July, he hit a 333 average, 1131 OPS. So far in August, he has an 863 OPS. So that is a 38 game sample size where he has like a 950 OPS over his last 38 games. Like Eugenio Suarez has been on fire for a while now. And the craziest part about watching that finale for the D-backs, it felt like they left runs on the board, right? In that first inning, they could have tagged them for even more than the four runs that they got. They were two for 15 with runners in scoring position. Think about that. They scored 11 runs and weren't even converting their run scoring opportunities. If they just went, you know, 
four for 15 with Rowan's scoring position. They might have put like 14, 15 runs on the board. This D-backs team offensively is so incredible. Jock Peterson, he continued to hit well. Jake McCarthy is just smashing every day. Corbin Carroll's turning around his season. Like, you look at the lineup, like this is the skeleton crew lineup with Walker, Moreno, Marte out. Thankfully, we got Gurriel back who did have two hits, but like th- this is – one of the thinnest lineups the D-backs are going to throw out the whole season, and it still has incredible depth. You still have a guy like Eugenio Suarez, who we mentioned is on fire, batting seventh in this finale against the Colorado Rockies. I still like Blaze Alexander and Geraldo Perdomo and Kevin Newman and ADC at the bottom of your lineup in the second half of your lineup. Like The D-backs' depth is so crazy right now. And honestly, looking back at that Colorado Rocky series, I don't care what anyone says. You can't convince me the Rockies are not tanking and trying to lose. I mean, they were throwing the ball all over the ballpark. Anytime someone tried to steal, anytime people were just going to second base on a double, like three errors in the finale, they were just throwing it around all series. The defense was terrible for Colorado. The decision-making by the manager at times was atrocious. It just felt like the Rockies don't want this series at all. And I don't blame them. The Rockies should be in tank mode. They should try to get the number one pick in the draft. Why not try to stack talent for Colorado? I don't really like a lot of pieces on that team. There's some lineup pieces I don't mind with the Rockies with Ryan McMahon, Nolan Jones, if he can ever turn it around. Brandon Doyle has been fantastic this season. So they have some guys, but their pitching has been so bad for so long. They could really use some help in the draft. And also, we got the best... Monty start all season. Uh, this was a quality start by Monty. He hasn't done that since like June. Six innings, three earned runs, and a season high eight strikeouts. Everything was kind of working. Right now with Monty, it seems like a lot of the breaking and like off speed stuff is kind of his go to. That change up seems to be like cooking the most for Jordan Montgomery. And it's good to see him finally putting together some encouraging starts. Like I discussed on previous pods, I wanted Ryan Nelson to win the job over Jordan Montgomery, but now it seems like we're going to six-man rotation and we're going to have Jordan Montgomery and Ryan Nelson. And the way Monty pitched in the finale did leave me feeling a little bit encouraged. Maybe he could build up his momentum as we enter the playoffs. We shall see. D-backs need to keep it going against the Florida teams next. You got Tampa Bay and the Miami Marlins. Tampa Bay up first. They have been struggling since the deadline. Their offense falling off. Of course, they traded Randy Rosarina. Uh, some other pieces as well, like their team, is just not hitting the ball as well recently. So a great opportunity for the D-backs to continue to take advantage against these lowly teams, as we discussed. And I said the D-backs really... You know, going against some inferior opponents, it'd be nice if they stack up wins because we know how tight the race is. The Padres have won every game the D-backs have won basically since the All-Star break. The Dodgers are keeping pace as well. But the D-backs are within two and a half games of the division lead, and they are tied with San Diego Padres. But you could potentially surpass. I mean, you and the Padres could both potentially surpass the Dodgers, but for the D-backs to do that, you have to keep your foot on the gas and going against a couple inferior teams in Florida. You want to keep it going, and it looks like on fly. Uh, it looks like on Friday, like I mentioned, we will be getting the six-man rotation from the D-backs. Ryan Nelson, Jordan Montgomery, both staying in the rotation. Looks like Ryan Nelson will be making the start on Friday. So I actually want to talk about in segment number two: is a six-man rotation a good idea? But hey, if you're thinking about going to any D-backs games in the future, then the place you want to go to purchase tickets is going to be Game Time because Game Time is the best place for last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy theater, and more. Flash deals save you even more with exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Zone deals save you even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats. All in pricing, you toggle this feature on and it shows you the total cost up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Get a panoramic view from your seat before you even buy. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And also, if you want to play America's number one 
daily fancy sports app, then I suggest you guys hop on Prize Picks because with over 5 million active members, it is America's number one daily fancy sports app. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fancy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stats projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Lockdown MLB for first deposit match up to $100. That's code Lockdown MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Lockdown Dimebacks podcast. And let's discuss if the six-man rotation for the D-backs is a good idea. Because this is not something you typically see teams do too often. Baseball is typically a traditional sport. Teams don't like to get too crazy. Maybe every now and then you see an opener, stuff like that. But six-man rotation... Not that common of occurrence in baseball. Teams like to go with their typical five guys. And for the D-backs, they have so many options for their rotation. As we always talk about, the D-backs depth is crazy. And the fact that they're going to a six-man rotation alludes to their depth. And I want to ask you guys the question, as I always do, because I love to get you guys' response. Do you think it's a do you think it's a good idea for the D-backs to go to a six-man rotation? Because I actually believe this is the correct move. Most of the time, I'm out on a six-man rotation. But in this scenario, I think it makes sense. Ryan Nelson deserved the rotation spot over Jordan Montgomery. We've discussed it so much. Jordan, uh, Ryan Nelson has been so good for the D-backs. You look again at his numbers. Ryan Nelson, since June 29th, has been fantastic for Arizona. 49.2 innings pitch, a 2.9 ERA in his last eight games pitch. Like he's been fantastic since June 29th, carrying this D bats pitching staff from a starter perspective. He has the best starting ERA in the rotation during that time. Brandon Fott's not far behind him. 302 ERA, like very encouraging stuff by your young pitchers. Ryan Nelson has been absolutely fantastic. Is his strikeout rate elite? 8.8 strikeouts per nine. No, but sub two walks per nine. You love to see that. Not giving up home runs. Like Ryan Nelson, his case is he doesn't give up a ton of hard contact. He doesn't give up a ton of walks. He doesn't give up a ton of home runs. Like he is just playing clean baseball, powering guys, uh, powering that that fastball by guys. And he just looks very, very comfortable right now. But despite him pitching so well over the last couple months. It didn't feel like he was going to get the rotation spot over Jordan Montgomery because of politics. The D-backs did not sign Jordan Montgomery to that massive deal this offseason. Yes, it had some mutual option where he could potentially come back for next year. But still, a two-year $50 million deal. Yes, the D-backs even knew the that he was going to start the season slow and have to give him some time. But I don't think the D-backs knew he was going to need this much time. I didn't think the D-backs... I don't think the D-backs knew he was going to be this bad. And now... They're like, okay, we're paying him all that money, but yet we also have a Ryan Nelson who is pitching very well. What should we do? Well, typically, you always follow the money. That's why I didn't think Ryan Nelson was going to be in the rotation because Monty is just too expensive to put in the bullpen. You don't put $25 million guys in the bullpen. It just does not happen. That cost is way too much unless you're... You know, an 80-save reliever, Emmanuel Classe might get 25, probably not on his next deal. But if you're Jordan Montgomery, there was no way you were going to the pen if you were the D-backs. There was no way they were going to put him in the bullpen. And then also, I think the other reason is now you can use the rest of the season as an audition, right? You want to know whether he's good enough to even be on the postseason roster. You can use the next few weeks to decide that. And you can use the next few weeks to decide if you want to bring him back for next season. So... I do think there was a bunch of reasons why Ryan Nelson was not going to get a rotation spot over Jordan Montgomery because of the politics with the money and because it would be a great audition for the D-backs to see 
Do we want to put Monty on the postseason roster? Do we even want to keep him for next season? Or maybe we ultimately decide he needs to be going in the bullpen. That's why I thought Ryan Nelson was never going to get a rotation spot over a Jordan Montgomery. And honestly, I'm hoping after his start in the finale against Colorado Rockies, I'm hoping Jordan Montgomery could start to build a little bit momentum, right? Start to get going. This guy has been so good the last three years. His numbers have gone better every single season. Really good for the Rangers last year in the World Series. And then he had just looked out of shape. He has not been able to throw the ball hard. He has looked so bad for the D-backs this year. So I'm hoping that finale against the Rockies could be an encouraging sign for things to come. I would have put Monty in the bullpen, but we knew the D-backs weren't going to do that, despite Ryan Nelson being the best D-backs pitcher for a while now. And I think the reason why I love the D-backs going to the six-man rotation is because they did realize he has been the best pitcher for a while. We knew he wasn't going to win the rotation spot over Jordan Montgomery. You couldn't say, Ryan Nelson, here's the number five. Now, Monty, you go in the bullpen. The D-backs weren't going to do that. But they said, you know what? Ryan Nelson is giving us our best chance to win when he goes out there. So you know what? We're going to keep him in the rotation. We're going to keep Monty because of the money in the rotation. And then we're also going to keep Ryan Nelson, who has been pitching so well for the D-backs, the best D-backs pitcher since the 29th. How can you take him out the rotation? He's given the D-backs the best chance to start. And so now this has become a competition potentially for next season of who should be the number five starter, which is why I love it. Not only for just the personal reasons related to Jordan Montgomery for his audition for the rest of the year for the postseason and whether we whether or not we want to bring him back for next year, but we now get to see him side by side with Ryan Nelson. And I think it could breed great competition because we already got a good finale from Ryan Nelson. But prior to that, we saw Ryan Nelson against the Phillies, right? We knew Merrill Kelly was going to get activated that weekend. Ryan Nelson was probably thinking, this could be my last start, so let me make it worth something. And he dominated the Phillies lineup that day. And so now we get to see that fire, that competition again for the rest of the season. And maybe Ryan Nelson pushes Jordan Montgomery out this offseason. The D-backs say, you know what? Ryan Nelson had such a good year this past season. How can we go with Jordan Montgomery next year at the $25 million price tag? Like, Ryan Nelson's going to get paid, what, a fifth of that? A six of that next season? I don't really have his contract numbers pulled up, so I could be way off. But by the end of the year, if Ryan Nelson finishes with like a 3-7, a 3-8 year ray, 175 innings pitch, like the D-backs might just keep Ryan Nelson around for next season, push Jordan Montgomery out the door, and make Ryan Nelson the everyday number five starter which would be a crazy development because of how good Jordan Montgomery has been in the past and how shaky Ryan Nelson has been. But Ryan Nelson all of a sudden could be a fantastic success story in terms of development for the D-backs, how the D-backs turn Ryan Nelson and Brandon Fott into the next cornerstone of their rotation. I can already see the article being written. So I like this six-man rotation a lot for the D-backs. I also like it because now, you allow guys like the Gallons and the Merrill Kellys who pitched a lot last year. Now they get extra rest. Obviously, those two guys haven't pitched a ton this season, but now they get extra rest going into the postseason. Now they pitch every sixth day. It should be even more fresh. It should have a little bit more oomph, a little bit more juice in their pitches now in the playoffs. And so I think the six-man rotation actually is the best way to use utilize the current options you have. You can now see that number five starter competition for next season. You can see whether or not you want to bring Jordan Montgomery back. And you keep your frontline starters in Merrill Kelly and Zach Allen fresh for the postseason. I think this was a fantastic move by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now I want to talk about some players that need to step it up in the stretch run of the season in segment number three. But hey, if you need to stay hydrated this summer, then I suggest using Liquid IV because when you're taking in America's pastime, don't forget to hydrate with Liquid IV's Popsicle Firecracker flavor, a surefire summer hit. Tear, pour, live more. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. Powered by LIV Hydroscience, an optimized ratio of electrolytes, 
essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients that turn ordinary water into extraordinary hydration. Three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, eight essential vitamins and nutrients, always non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, and soy-free. No more thirsty summers when you indulge in hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when go to liquidiv.com and use code MLB at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast and let's discuss some players They need to step it up down the stretch for the D-backs because we've talked so much about the good from the D-backs since June 29th. And, you know, again, I'm going to look at some stats, but not from June 29th. I'm going to look at some second half stats for the D-backs because most of these guys for the D-backs in the second half of the year have been balling out of control. But there are a couple guys who really need to step up in this stretch run because you can really make the argument there's like only two guys that have not been productive on this whole roster for the D-backs in the second half of the season, which is kind of crazy. I'm going to just list some names right now because I think this is insane because you go in WRC Plus on Fangraphs and it says WRC Plus when you hover over the top with your little mouse tool, it says 100 is considered league average if you have 100 wrc plus you're just average so if you have a over 200 wrc plus does that make you like an mvp because jock peterson his wrc plus since the all-star break 226 adrian del castillo 213 Kenta Marte, 213 jake mccarthy 201 so those are just four players who are considered double average those are basically mvp guys four dudes since the all-star break But that's not it. Eugenio Suarez, WRC Plus, 163. Josh Bell, 162. Gabriel Moreno, 152. Corbin Carroll, 151. Gerardo Perdomo, 115. Randall Gritchick, 111. Kevin Newman, 105. So how many guys did I just name with over 100 WRC Plus? 11 dudes are at least league average. No one is bad. No one is mediocre. You look in the lineup among position players. 11 guys are at least league average and like a Kevin Newman at a 105. Like that's perfect for what Kevin Newman is. If he's league average, that means the D-backs squeeze all the juice you can out of Kevin Newman and his playing this year. And I think they have. I think they've gotten the best version of a Kevin Newman you could get this season. I've been impressed with a Kevin Newman all year. So I actually do like him. But when looking at the list of 11 names I just mentioned, a guy who I didn't name with a WRC plus of 100 since the All-Star break. This is the first guy I'm going to talk about that needs to step it up in the stretch run of the season. Lord Guriel. He was two for four in that finale against the Colorado Rockies, but overall in the second half of the season has not been that productive. Like I said, 11 guys are at least league average. Lord Guriel, he's not far. 98 WRC plus since the All-Star break. So he's right there, but we need to bump that number up. He has a 288. He has a 288 average since the break, which is very good. But OBP is not good enough. And the slugging really, 363. That's really the area he needs to pick it up. I don't know where the power has gone for Lords Guriel. One home run in his last 22 games and only three RBIs in his last 22 games. When the guy was even struggling to begin the season, he was still run producing like hell. But right now, he's not really doing anything offensively that's really helping the D-backs. He doesn't strike out a ton, which is good, but he's also not drawing a ton of walks. He's not really providing any power. Like We just need Lords Goriel overall to do more. Defensively, I think he's been really strong for the D-backs in the outfield. Like I always say, I think he's actually an underrated defender. He's not like... Corbin Carroll, Alec Thomas, where he can use his speed to get to any ball. But if he is able to make a play on any ball, I feel very confident he's going to make the play. And especially balls at the wall, he just feels like he has great instinct knowing where that wall is, when to jump, when to rob something. So I love Lords Guriel defensively. And offensively, I still like him, but he needs to pick it up because right now there are 11 players, according to WRC+, Plus, who have been better than Lords Guriel since the All-Star break, which is insane to kind of think about and then 
that's really all the position players that need to step up. Like, honestly, like I just mentioned, everyone is going off the D-backs. I guess if you want to throw out a couple more names, like there are three players who have uh, under a WRC plus for the D-backs since the All-Star break, or technically four. Lourdes Gurriel, who we just mentioned, Alec Thomas, who just got demoted, Christian Walker, who has barely played since the All-Star break. He has uh, really, I mean, we're not going to count Christian Walker. He has been hurt forever since the All-Star break. And then Jose Herrera, who is now probably the number three catcher for the D-back. So, like, of guys who are playing every day, Walker is injured. Thomas got demoted. Herrera is fine. Like, Lord Gurriel is the only one among those four who's been disappointing with the sub-100 WRC+. plus of the everyday players since the all-star break. So definitely need to see him pick it up. And then when you're looking at the pitchers for the D-backs, again, it's very nice. There's not a lot of bad pitchers for the D-backs since the all-star break, which might sound kind of crazy, but everyone has really been performing well for the D-backs. Like Gilbert Diaz and his two starts. All right, we're not going to count him. Slade Sacconi, I'm also not counting him. Like those aren't dudes who I actually think about uh, being important in a postseason setting for the D-backs. Like, everyone has actually been good for Arizona since the All-Star break, except for one guy in the pitching staff, specifically in the bullpen, Dylan Floro. Right now, he is the weakest link for the D-backs in the pen, and I talk about how I love the moves for Floro and Puck, not just because we we're adding quality relievers, but because it raised the floor of the bullpen. Meant no more Miguel Castro, meant no more... Scott McGuff, so whoever that last two dudes in the bullpen were who suck. Now everyone was going to be at least average to above average to great to special. And Floro is kind of just killing the vibe right now. In the five innings since the All-Star break, he has not been good. 7.2 ERA. He's got the worst K rate on the team as well uh, since the All-Star break. Like It has not been pretty for Floro. A 391 average allowed, highest on the team as well during the stretch. He just gotten hit so hard. He hasn't given up any walks. Like it's literally just straight contact off Dylan Floro whenever he's come out the pen this season. And part of it is one of the concerns we had when the D-backs acquired him because he was not good in high leverage moments with the Nationals. All his really good stats came out when the games didn't matter, when the score was already out of proportion. So it was like he never really got to pitch in games that meant something, and now he's having to do that for the D-backs. There's a different level of pressure when you have to do that if you're Dylan Flora. So hopefully he can get better and turn his season around because if he turns it around, Lords Guriel turns it around, Like there's really not a weakness at all on this D-backs team. Obviously, you want Jordan Montgomery to still continue to pitch better, but we've been asking for that for weeks. That's nothing surprising. Uh, Zach Gallen, I don't like the way he's looked, but the numbers still tell you he has like a 3 one year ray since the All-Star break, so hard to complain um, with those numbers there. So for the D-backs, uh, I- I'm just hoping that a guy like Floro and a guy like Lord Gurrell can turn around their season because if they do that, man, this team would be cooking. Now that's it for this edition of the Locked On Dimebacks podcast. Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Doses.